Welcome everyone, my name is Cody Scott, and in this video, we learn how to get perfect exposure, perfect white balance, and perfect color clarity in DaVinci Resolve by using one of these things, a color checker. Let's talk about it. Our learning objective for today is how we can speed up our workflow by using a color checker in pre-production so we can save time in post-production. Now there are many benefits of using a color checker. Of course, speeding up your workflow in post-production is the most obvious. The second is that you remove all of the guesswork that goes into correcting and grading an image. You will be able to match up the white balance, the exposure, and the color clarity based upon the capture you get with your color checker. Now, you don't have to be an expert in order to get correct looking footage. All you have to do is follow the steps outlined in this video, leveraging the tools in DaVinci Resolve, and you will have a professional image right away. So let's skip that learning curve and begin color grading like a pro. Let's get into creating the grade. As you can see, I've already found my hero shot where we have no reflection on our color checker. That is important to make sure that we get perfect contrast when bringing in our color chart function. Now, we can turn that off for now. Come over to your node tree and create three nodes by pressing Option S. I'm going to drag each one of these nodes to the top just so we can see what it is that we are working with. It's always good to stay organized, right? We'll disconnect these because we don't need them. This one is going to be our chart. So let's label it chart. This one is going to be our color. So let's label it color. And this one is going to be our white balance. So let's label it white balance. Next step, click on your chart node, change your selection tool to color chart, and then click on your color chart panel. The color chart you used during pre-production identify it and then select it from the configuration menu. Next, change your source gamma to the camera that you used. Ours was the Blackmagic design. Our target gamma will always stay Rec. 709 most of the time. And your target color space, well, change it to whatever you're working in. I'm working in DaVinci Wide Gamut and that can be verified by clicking File, Project Settings, and looking at the Resolve Color Management preset. We'll click out of that. The next step is to line up the boxes to your color chart, and for better precision, you can even zoom in. As long as those boxes are touching the squares roughly, well then, you're in good shape. They don't need to be perfect. Before I click match, I'm just going to verify that we do have our color checker selected, our, our source gamma, our target gamma, and our target color space. I'll just click match. As we can see, we now have our image converted to Rec. 709. So let's move on to color. We'll change our selector to off and come over to our primaries. To me, it's just a little bit easier to work in. Next up, grab a power window, come over to your pen tool, and draw around the primary color squares, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, red, green, and blue. Now, to show just the mask, click on the magic wand tool up here. And you can zoom in to just dial in your mask. Next up is to change your waveform to vector scope. And our goal is to line up each color to its corresponding box. So we're gonna get the tip of the red into the red square, the tip of the pink into the pink square, tip of the blue into the blue square, and so on. So come over to your curves, click on the second dot, and then go down to the bottom and click all these circles down here that have the corresponding colors. Beginning with red, we'll come over to hue rotate, and then line up the red line with its corresponding box. Click on magenta and line the magenta up with its corresponding box. And then we'll repeat this pattern until we have all of the colors lined up with their corresponding box. 
you'll notice once you get to cyan, the blue will also shift. And you can easily just go back by clicking on the circle and then dialing it in. The yellow actually lands inside its corresponding box, which is quite nice. Now that we have the perfect hue represented, we next need to match up the perfect saturation. So click the third circle next to the hue versus hue, and we'll now move into hue versus saturation. Again, click the corresponding circles at the bottom of the color grading curves panel. Starting with red, we'll move the saturation until the line is inside of the box. We'll move over to magenta and push it until it's inside the box. Next, we have blue. We'll push it until it's inside the box. Same thing with cyan. And if it doesn't land inside the box right away, that's okay. Saturation. And then it looks like yellow is already inside of the box. Now we'll just verify that everything is where it is. And we can even create another node and push green and cyan further to make sure that they are in their target saturation levels. However, for the look I'm going for, it's okay if it's missing by just a little bit. However, if you want perfect, get it inside the box. So we'll turn off our power window and you'll notice with just these two corrections, after turning off our magic tool, we'll be able to see the difference between using a color checker and doing it ourselves. That's perfect color. Now the last step is to get perfect white balance. So let's change our vector scope to waveform. And you'll notice all of this data over here. Well, we're going to refine that data and get the perfect white balance by again, taking a pen tool and drawing around our white and black squares. Turn your magic wand on to show just the exposures. And to further dial this in, you can drag your pen tool over to just the white. And you'll notice that the, the trace looks white. When the trace looks white, that means that every color is perfectly white balanced. However, we could still refine this by clicking on our primary magic wand tool over here, hovering over the square. And before I click, notice there's RGB values saying 225, 226, and 223. That's showing the imbalance of the colors in the image. If we click, then we'll see a small shift. And when we come back to it, they are closer to each other. So we'll turn off our magic wand. We'll turn off our pen tool. And then we'll take a step back to admire the beautiful color corrected image. We started with the chart to get perfect contrast. Then we moved to color to get perfect saturation and then white balance to just level out all of the inconsistencies in the RGB channels. And now if you'd like to, you can further grade your image. And I think I'll do just that. And that is how you color correct and color grade your image well, if you found this video helpful and you would like to learn more, please click the link in the description. Subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.